Hello and welcome back to the channel to Agree to Disagree. My name is Brendan and this is my review for episode 7 of season 4 of Game of Thrones, Mockingbirds. Let's do it. Great acting, great... Uh, story, plot, everything. It was, it was an awesome, it was mainly a transition episode into uh, the conclusion of Tyrion's trial, but once again, as pretty much every episode of this season has, is ended with a bang, the episode, and every episode is pretty much ended with a bang because the producers promised a hell of a season for season four of this year, and they have held up that promise so far, and it was awesome. I just love it. it I've been loving this season so much. Okay. I just want to get into spoilers. It was a great episode. Go watch it if you haven't watched it. But I'm getting into, spo into spoilers right now. So if you haven't seen it, get out of the review. Go watch it and can come back and join in the discussion of this spoilers review section. All right, let's get right into it. Don't mind me looking down. I got my notes right here. I just want to make sure I hit everything. All right, so the first thing is Brun is not going to be the champion for Tyrion. Tyrion's a little shocked because they were friends and he was figuring Brun would do it for him. And Brun is kind of like, he was kind of like living for uh, Tyrion, and now he's kind of coming to his own, he's getting married, uh, he's becoming a lord, so why would he fight? And especially when it's against the, the mountain, and that's the next point we're going to get to. The mountain is the champion for Cersei and Joffrey, and he's a beast. It's gonna be a rough, that's going to be a rough fight, whoever decides to be Tyrion's uh, champion. And we're going to get to that one very soon. Uh, next thing I want to talk about briefly, Khaleesi and Dario. Oh, oh ho, ho. You, you always sense that like sexual temptation Dario had for uh, Khaleesi and he came at her like a freaking train and they did the dirty dirty. That's going to be interesting how that plays out throughout the rest of the season. Now, there is two main parts that in this spoiler section that really were like really touching to me in this episode. The first one was the Hound. And with Arya, we finally got to see what makes the Hound tick. He got bit by that, that guy who was trying to get him, to, to, trying to kill him. And then Arya was saying she had, she had to like burn out or whatever. She had to use the fire and he freaked out. Because obviously he has that big burn. So we obviously know his weakness is fire. And you found out where the scar came from. His own brother burned him. And he had a very rough childhood. And his father never loved him. His father loved his brother. And once his brother burned him, the father said it was... His uh, bed sheets caught on fire on accident. So you can tell that the Hound had a very rough past, a very rough childhood, and that's what led him to be the way he is now. And I, 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 I freaking once again, Game of Thrones emotionally connects you to these characters. I got emotionally connected to the Hound. Who gets connected to the Hound? I mean, I didn't even care about him at all, but the chemistry between Arya and the Hound is just so breathtaking. It's one of the best duos in this show, and it's Fantastic, and that was just really nice. I really enjoyed that part. Finally, seeing like what is going on in his head a little bit, and you felt for him, and that's awesome. It's always awesome when you feel for the like the villain. I guess we can call him. I don't even know if we consider him a villain, but you felt for him either way, whether you like him or not. You know it was emotional, so that was pretty cool. Um, all shit broke loose when it came to. Uh, Lord Baelish, Sansa, and Liza. Liza freaked out on Sansa a couple episodes ago, thinking that Baelish is like using her for sex, blah blah blah, because he really loved uh, sis her sister, Sansa's mother, and it's just one big ass love triangle, even though it really didn't exist. And then Baelish pulls the move and sweeps in for the kiss on Sansa, as Liza's watching from the distance, right after Sansa striked Robin, her future husband. That was pretty cool. Robin is all messed up in the head from Liza, and Liza's all messed up in the head in general. <coughs> so, you know that that's not going to fly. It's not going to fly. Liza's going to go nuts. So what happens, like, pretty much the very next scene, Liza bugs out on Sansa, threatens, is tr like, threatening to throw her into the moon hole, and then what happened? Baelus comes in for the save. He obviously has feelings for Sansa now because she resembles her mother, and Baelish ultimately decided Sansa over Liza. And what does he do? He pushes Liza into the moon hole. 
And by the way, fantastic monologue from Lord Bayless right before he did that. He went on this whole spiel about how he's he swears on the gods and everything, blah, 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 that he's only loved one woman. And you're expecting him to say Liza just to save Sansa's ass? No. He says Sansa's mother and then boom. And that was freaking awesome. And the bang after bang after bang coming at you this season at the end of each episode. And that was a bang. Liza's gone. What's going to happen with that kingdom? Who knows? I'm pumped. Are you guys pumped? Because I'm pumped. Make sure you join me next time. Comment down below if you agree or disagree with me with any of my thoughts. And until next time, until next Sunday for the next review of Game of Thrones, my name is Brendan, and this is the channel to agree 